Hey everybody, this is Tall Gamer Junkie. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. So in this video, I want to go over some ideas that I would love to see happen in the next Life is Strange game sometime in the future. Now for this video, I tried to be creative as I could while keeping things grounded in realism because Life is Strange, for all the powers you get, the power to rewind time, telekinesis, empathy, the games often try to keep as keep you as grounded as possible, like, you compare Max's powers to the game versus the comics, you can see that Max's powers um, are a bit more fantasy-like, you know, well, not fantasy, that's not the right word, she's basically had a power-up in the comics because of the writing, you know, but anyways, getting back on topic, let's start off with the first thing I'd like to see in a Life is Strange game. So the first idea is to let the main character we'll play as be able to use their own powers for their own personal gain. Now Life is Strange 1 and 2 have done this. There are little choices you can use as Max to um, tip scales in your favour as it would be. So for example you can talk to Courtney in episode 2, um, use dialogue you unlock to rewind time, then episode 4, um, ep sorry, and then you can use that dialogue to get you into the Vortex Club, which helps you out in episode 4. In episode 3 of Life is Strange 2, you can um, have Daniel break open, um, I think it's Meryl's, I think that's his name, you can help, um, you can have D Daniel break open Meryl's safe to steal his money. Now obviously that does not go to plan and this will happen regardless of your choices. But the thing that um, Life is Strange 1 and 2 does is it gives you these, um, it says okay you can muck around with your powers but it never lets you believe like, well granted Sean you don't have powers in Life is Strange 2, getting back on topic. Um, it lets you explore with the powers and you can, you can use them for your own personal game but you never do anything that goes outside the character's personality. Well, technically that's not true, there are a few exceptions in each game, but ultimately um, you use your powers for good essentially, for your friend, for Max, she uses her powers to help Chloe discover what happened with Rachel and ultimately save her life, depending on what, if you sacrifice a kid you obey. And Daniel will use his powers to help him and Sean cross the border, or not, depending on what morals you taught Sean, as, what what morals you taught Daniel as Sean. So, if this were to work, Deck Knight would need to create a character that's essentially a loner, maybe someone who was part part of a gang who ran away from it, like maybe ran away from home, joined the gang, and then didn't like the gang and just ran away and was just a loner and then ended up something happened that caused them to get their powers and since you have no it, it's it would be good if this person this character you play as has no attachment like to any previous characters in their history so you have this character we learn about their history about their past about friends and family but we never actually see them so this way when we go to a new environment we have control of our powers, and we decide what we want to do, and we make friends and enemies with various people, and some people who maybe discover your powers can be like, uh, okay, let's, um, what do you call it, um, you don't need to use your powers for evil, you can use them for good, and then maybe there's another person that's like, you can do what you want with your powers, it's like, don't listen to this person. I think that would be a pretty interesting dynamic, like, let you decide what you want to do with your powers. You know, are you going to be, are, are you going to have your character be like, with great power comes great responsibility, or are you going to be a character that says, with great power comes no responsibility? I mean, let us decide that, that would make for a great Life is Strange game, like, really give us choice, really develop the character as we want them to be. And speaking of characters, let me move on to the second thing I want to talk about. Now, the second thing I want to bring up is having a love triangle. Now, I know what you're all going to say, that makes no sense of being an idiot, but technically, that is true. So, 
Life is Strange 1, 2, True Colors. We get the option for the protagonist to have two romances. In every game, it's always been one male and one female option. Now, we get to choose, okay? So it's not like, if you look up what the definition of a love triangle is, um, it's essentially two people fighting over or competing for the affection of one individual. And there are many movies, TV series, anime that show this. But granted, anime um, tends to have um, more than two love interests in, in certain cases. Like, so basically, instead of a love triangle, you get like a, the main character have a, has a love square or a love hexagon. So, yeah, but you you know what I mean. Essentially, what I'm trying to say. But getting back on topic, I think it would be interesting to have say you meet you meet someone first in the game and there and this is one of your um potential romances and then you meet someone else and there's like okay this is another potential romance and then you find out that these two two people don't actually like each other like this is just a scenario i'm using you can come up with any of your own basically these two people don't like each other but they like you and so as a result they're competing for your affection and obviously you would be given the choice to not pursue any romance you don't have to in any of the games but i think it would be interesting to just to have this because it hasn't been done in life is strange before so i think it would be interesting to have it now in well not now now but just later on in a series and and speaking of this, maybe uh, what could happen is um, one time you're hanging out with one of the interests, and the other person who's interested you, who's interested in you, maybe like sabotages it or something. I think that'd be pretty hilarious. But that's just me. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think that sounds stupid, ridiculous? Let me know. Now this third one may seem a bit silly, but hear me out. Now the third thing I think would be really cool to see would be someone with powers who is a vigilante. Now we know how powers work because of Life is Strange True Colors. Like it was specul- I made a theory video that maybe it's a gun that causes um, people to get powers like that as a joke, but really it's the trauma, the shock of um, seeing someone you care about get killed that causes your powers to manifest. Now let's say for example, um, I think like one of the biggest um, tragedies in any comic series which resulted in the person becoming a vigilante is Bruce Wayne. Um, he, he's a kid, like 10 or just under 10 years old, witnesses the murder of both his parents and dedicates his life to fighting crime. Well, depending on what, um, if, you, if you're reading a what if or an alternate timeline book, but the main continuity is Batman fights crime because of his parents' death. So what if we end up having something like that? What if, um, for example, you, the goal of a Life is Strange game is to avenge the death of a friend or family member um, with your new powers. I think that would be really cool. Now, I'm not trying to be over dramatic, like with costumes and gadgets and that, but I mean, just use your powers to get your revenge. And along the way, you get to make choices. Are you going to just be an asshole with your powers who will do nothing but um, seek revenge? Like, that's your point. Like, the screw everyone else, all that matters is your revenge. Or maybe you decide to use your powers to help people along the way so they don't suffer the way you suffer. I think that would be very interesting because um, there's so many opportunities that Deck Nine has with the Life is Strange IP now and they can go um, anywhere with it because um, we've seen like Life is Strange True Colors, it's a, it's a good game, I enjoyed it. Um, it, it is a bit like short with the episodes um, because Unlike Life is Strange 1 and 2, the, it, like the writing is still good, I'm, I'm, I'm not putting, I'm not trying to put shit on it, but the writing, uh, but the episodes do seem a bit shorter than uh, the other ones. Uh, anyways, getting back on topic here, um, 
maybe the character you're playing as is in law enforcement, maybe you're a police officer, a private detective, chief of police, and your powers, um, and, um, just say, if you become a vigilante, for example, um, you still have ties to former law enforcement, or maybe you had ties to the underworld, right? Like, you were a criminal, and something bad happened to your family, so you have to use your criminal ties to help you figure out who hurt your friends or your family, and why, and get revenge, you know, just... And I'm, I'm probably not wording this right, it's probably coming off stupid, but I'm just trying to think outside the box here. I mean, if I can do it, Deck Nine can do it and give us interesting characters. And they've already proven they can do it with Black and Strange True Colors. Now, the fourth thing on this list is, and now, um, technically, it's already happened, but I, I want to go into more depth by what I mean. Um, this next thing I want is for um, when we the next protagonist of Life is Strange, or any Life is Strange game, to be an adult. Now, technically, Ma um, Alex is already an adult. Um, she was born in uh, 1997, and the year Life is Strange take True Colors takes place in is 2019, so she's uh, 22 or 21. No, she was born in July, and it's April, so she's... 21. Now the thing about growing up is you don't just turn 18 or 21 and suddenly you're an adult. Like legally, I guess you are, but like mentally, it take you have to be at least somewhere in your mid 20s to early 30s before you can like mentally uh, become an adult until you're mentally mature. Now there have been other studies. I've read a few things. And they each one has a different study, like maybe depending on nature versus nurture determines on how quickly you mature or how um, slowly you mature. Like, but I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to get into this. So, let's just say you're an adult, and like I, I had this idea. Maybe um, you're a single parent, and like, and we've seen um, from. Um, Chloe's point of view um, in Life is Strange, how she hates her stepdad, David, and um, like maybe the roles could be switched, for example, because we've already seen what it's like from Chloe's point of view, but I'd, I'd be very interested to see, for example, like as I just said, you're a single parent, and maybe the death, or maybe you have a child, or your wife, or husband, or whoever dies, and this results in you getting your powers. And with your powers, maybe it's a secret between you and your kid, like, you, um, you use your powers for him or her, but you don't let, um, no one else can know. And when I say use your powers for your child, um, what I mean is though, let's just say you have, uh, the power to, um, create images and that, so let's just say you telling your child a story and then you use your powers to bring the creatures or the characters in the book to life. And I, I think that'd be pretty awesome, pretty wholesome for a child to watch unless like, then maybe it gets out of hand and the bad monsters are coming to life and so you have to, uh, yeah, you're gonna have to avoid that or maybe that could play an intricate part in the story, I don't know. But yeah, I, I think it would be good to play a game from an adult's perspective perspective, like maybe even a middle-aged man or woman, just, um, and that in this person, um, would have had, let's just say they got their powers when they were young, and so they've had decades of experience to master and learn them, and they could be the most OP character in, in the entire Life is Strange universe. And speaking of powers, this moves on to my fifth and last one, which is, have us meet more than one person or maybe a group of people with powers. Now, the thing about Life is Strange you have to understand is powers have... It's never been stated clearly who was the first person to have a power, um, where do powers come from, or how long how long have people with powers been around, or if the government even knows about it. Like, hell! Like, if you wanted to get biblical with this, maybe you could say that Moses, like, himself got his powers due to a traumatic event. Now, I'm not going to get into the Bible and all that, but I'm just saying, if, um, if Assassin's Creed has done this stuff before, like, 
Uh, Jesus, for example, was resurrected due to a piece of Eden known as the Shroud, which has incredible healing abilities, and you can see it in Assassin's Creed Syndicate um, with the last enemy, I believe, the Starek, where um, Jacob and Evie have to fight him, but he keeps healing from his wounds, and, and until you remove the Shroud, you can't kill him. Now, the thing about this idea is it really has to be careful how it's played out. And the reason I say this is um, Life is Strange is full of um, a rich um, a rich well of characters. I mean, like, even the side characters I enjoy. Um, and characters you meet on the street or just out in towns, any one of them could have superpowers. And a lot of people are keeping secret about this. So if a person were to, say, gather other people with powers around, um, maybe they're all in, like, and I guess you, I'm not trying to say, like, it's an X-Men type thing where you've got a bunch of mutants, um, who aren't afraid to show off their powers in, in a safe area with other mutants, but the thing that always got me weird is that Life is Strange 2, all the shit that Daniel and Sean do, well, mainly Daniel do, do to his powers, it's never really it's it's mentioned a couple times, but um, like the thing at the border, for example, um, where you have the choice to cross the border or not, and you see Daniel, um, you can have Daniel just completely destroy the police force blocking the border, and then once that's done, Daniel just drives them on through. I mean, I'm sure there's security cameras at the border where they were trying to go. And then we get um, a, a jump forward six years later, and they're just in Mexico, in Puerto Lobos, I believe it's called, and nothing's happened really. The police aren't after them. Like, I under, like I'm not too familiar with the law, and I get that um, certain places, if you commit a crime, a certain crime in one place, and then you move to a country, you can't get tried there. Like, I, I don't know what the exact law is, but. Um, I don't think that applies to someone who has fucking superpowers, I mean, come on, it's ridiculous, but yeah, um, if you were to ever get a group of people with superpowers, then obviously uh, I think it would be interesting to have the government just be monitoring these people with superpowers, like they're, they're um, and I'm going to bring up something else, there's this other movie, um, I forget what the movie is, but the first one was called like, I think it was Glass, and then Split, and in case it, um, Split was one, the guy, um, with multiple personalities, and then you find out in this universe, superheroes are real, they are real people with powers, but the government conceals their existence, which, um, I, it makes sense, like, if people discover there are other people with superpowers, it kind of shatter what we as a society believe to be normal in that, I mean, people don't get superpowers, we're just average human beings, like, I mean, you can go above the average, um, peak in terms of strength and speed if you really train, like, you got the world's strongest men and women, for example, world's fastest men and women, so, yeah, they can, um, they can push past their limits, but, like, with su superpowers, that's, like, breaking the limit, you're not pushing far past it, you're just breaking right through it. Uh, but anyways, that's, I would really like to hear your thoughts on all of this, do you think any of these ideas are good or bad? Uh, what ideas would you like to for the series to have? Or do you think that uh, the government knows about people with superpowers and are monitor monitoring them? Let me know in the comments below. This is Troll Game Junkie, signing off.